Mr. Ambassador, General Counsel, and friends, it's a real honor for me to be here today with my wife, Elizabeth, who herself is a Ukrainian American. I am uh, particularly pleased to be here with my friend, Walter Dudich, who was the first person who took me to Ukraine 16 years ago. And um, it was a great journey, a great adventure, and a great introduction. I've had the chance to be in Ukraine four, uh, three other times since then. And I want to take you back to a trip that I took and I found myself as an election observer during the election of President Poroshenko a few years ago. I was up in the city of Chernigov and we were out in the countryside and as an international observer, it was our job to make sure that the elections were legitimate, to look around and to make sure that they were fair and they, they were reasonable and I was a part of a larger group and I found myself out in a little country school, way, way out in the country. And the polling place itself was up on the second floor of a little school. And there were stairs to get up to the second floor. There was no elevators, there's no escalators. It was a very modest place. And as I was sitting there just observing, and that's what you do, you just kind of look around, there were two very old women who walked in. They were very old and they looked old, and they dressed old, and they walked old, and I was watching them because they were so interesting to me. And I began to think, what have those two women witnessed in their lives? What has their journey been like? And I guessed, I guessed that may, they have been born in the 1930s, I wasn't really sure, but if they were, then those two women endured some of the most difficult things in the entire 20th century. They endured a famine, the likes of which the world had really never seen. They endured Nazi oppression. They endured Soviet oppression. They endured a difficult transition into modernity and into democracy, which would have been a very arduous thing for someone of that age to do. And yet there were those two old Ukrainian women walking up those stairs, taking that ballot and casting a ballot. That's a very powerful image. And it made a very strong impression on me. A Couple of minutes ago, when we were being led by the clergymen in the liturgy, I don't speak Ukrainian. I didn't know a word of what was going on. And yet, in some ways, I didn't need to know the words because I knew the words. I knew the meaning. I knew what was happening, and that was, in the liturgy, there was an invocation, and there was a humility, and invoking God's presence and asking Him for His blessing in this time and in this season. And those words evoked a response. They revoked, invoked a response from all of you, and that was to cross yourselves. And it was to bring people together about these universal themes. And so don't you see what's going on now? What's going on in Ukraine is so much bigger than the country of Ukraine. Ukraine is not an isolated incident. Ukraine is a symbol of a much larger fight. And it is a fight about human dignity. It is a fight about who we are and what is our view of ourselves as creations of God. We are the beneficiaries and we are the trustees of freedoms that have been given to us. And then the question is, what do we do with those freedoms? Do we rescind from that? Are we intimidated by strong men? Or do we say, no, 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 we understand what's going on. And I think today we do understand what's going on. And so we stand and we honor a young soldier and all that he symbolizes for his willingness to stand, not just for Ukraine, as important as Ukraine is, but for values that are very fundamental to us all. And these are values that are worth defending, that have to be defended. So of course, today is the day of the defenders. Let me just make one other final point. 
my wife Elizabeth, who I mentioned a minute ago, is an oil painter. And she painted a painting, and she wanted the painting to be presented to President Poroshenko on the commemoration of his joint spe session speech to the United States Congress. And so she painted a beautiful painting. And the image is of the United States Capitol, but in the background, it is Ukraine's colors, the colors of my tie, by the way. Um, it's the colors of Ukraine, and those symbols of those are not lost on you. And the title of the painting is Bright Horizon. Why is it Bright Horizon? Why would you name something Bright Horizon at a time when a country is under so much pressure by Russian aggression? You'd name it Bright Horizon because you know how the story ends. This story ends brightly. This story ends well. Why? Because people of goodwill understand that this is a time to stand for freedom. This is a time to stand with Ukraine. And this is a time to push back against aggression, no matter what shape it takes. So thank you, and God be with you. Thank you so much, Congressman Roscom. We can't thank you enough.